The saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes you look at a game cover, you look at a movie poster, and you can't help but judge them because you can look at the title and say, wait a minute, I love me Bust a Move. Oh, they got a new one for PS2, but then you look at, you look at this beauty and you can't help but feel a little bit of a pain in your body, in your mind, your spirit. So, hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back. Today, we're gonna have some fun as we talk about some good or great games that are part of my physical game collection that the cover is not so great. And I would love to do a follow-up video reacting to some of your favorite picks. So don't be shy, people. You go down to the comment section and share those games that you think, Juan, they are awesome but you're gonna be uh, in a bit of a torturous situation as you try to evaluate, take a look and react to some of those awful, awful covers. And uh, yeah, I gotta talk about this first one here. I remember when I saw it, I was in a, in a electronic boutique in Puerto Rico here, and they had this at the bottom. You know, a game's not selling well, but when they're not displayed like this, they're displayed by its side, and they had a bunch of them, and I love playing Bust and Move growing up and the Neo Geo machines and all of that good stuff. You know, Taito, awesome company. So I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. You know, you, you just look at the, the spine, makes you feel alive. And look, maybe we can try and figure out what they were going for, but the game that you wanna buy is not the baby. It's not a super baby move. It's not a super baby game, okay? Baby geniuses, maybe, did they ever come out of, with a, the game based on that movie? They should have, but anyway, here you have the game over there, but then you have this and it's just ugly. I mean, no offense to the baby. I'm not talking about the baby. It's the complexity. They tattooed Super Busta Move on the baby's head. I mean, it's like poorly Photoshop because who would trademark the baby? I mean, is the baby trademark the logo? So many questions here. And it's just kind of disgusting, right? It's, it's not great when you look at a game's cover and it's like, ugh. But the gameplay itself, I mean, it's Busta Move, right? So you can't go wrong with that. Now, sticking with the PS2, I love me sometimes splitters. I mean, it's a pretty relevant topic. People always talk about the second and the third game, which is a future perfect, and I own all three games. But when you go to Time Splitters 1, I actually bought this game back in the day. It was a uh, disc only, so I actually printed this with like my crappy $60 printer back when I first got this game. And it's because I have played two and three, never played the first because nobody talked about it. But just look at this, right? I'm not gonna say this is the best cover ever. If anything, it's pretty generic, but you get the sense of the time splitting element, right? There are these uh, rays behind the main character. You get to see the main character. There's a huge gun. I think it gives off a better representation of the graphics because it is the graphics that you see in the actual game. But then this one, it's like, okay, so there's a gun. There's like a robot lady or something like that, but this doesn't really say anything. And I think at the end of the day, when you judge uh, a game or a movie based on its cover, it's like, does this make me feel like I'm playing a certain type of game? Now, the gameplay itself is pretty serviceable. Knowing what we eventually got with two and three, this is a great game. And I would love to talk about this game some at some point uh, in the future in better detail. So if you've played any of the time splitters and you're eagerly anticipating a fourth game or a remake or something, please let me know in the comments. Now this next one, arguably one of the best selling games of all time because we're gonna be going over to the Wii, Mario Kart Wii. Just for context, I mean, I can pull up any, any Mario Kart cover uh, for the video, but just look at this, right? Nice and vivid. You get to see the characters here. It's like, hey, Hey, we got, we got some accessories we got to sell for the game. So let's literally put the accessory in the cover of the game so people feel like they need to buy it if they get the game used and they want to get this separately or if they bundled it up uh, together. But this is one of the most boring box arts ever. Some people may say, hey, simplicity is key, and I agree. I think some of the best uh, game covers are the ones that are pretty simple, but... This is not the first, not the second, or not even the third Mario Kart game. So I feel like we have uh, a bit of a reputation to live up to. And it's not just the character work. We have very generic font. I mean, compared to, uh, to this, you know, to Super Mario Kart or anything like that, I think the game is unbelievable. I mean, everybody's pretty much played this game, even for just a couple of minutes. But just when you look at, at the cover, it almost seems like a value title. It seems like a budget title, but we know that's definitely not the case. Now, going back to the PS2, 
This is a game that I freaking loved, and I don't even remember why I bought it. It came with a Bluetooth headset, I believe it did, and a nice uh, cardboard box. But we got to talk about SOCOM US Navy SEALs, which for context, right off the bat, I do got to compare the first game's cover to the second one. They are very similar, but this one, I feel like you have somewhat of a suspense, right? There's uh, buildings in the background, they're in the water, the lighting seems a little bit more real. Whereas this first one, I mean, I don't know if this is an actual real image of somebody in action, but the lighting looks so off. Like everything about this looks so artificial and the game is amazing. Has it stood the test of time? Not necessarily, but back in the day, I love me some third person shooters and this one has more of a tactical element. It's not just a run and gun game. It was my first real introduction to online gaming, especially in the console side, because I have played things like, uh, you know, Quake and all that stuff on real on, on PC. And this second game is maybe in my top 10 favorite games of all time. It is just unbelievable. I actually reached uh, top 10. I reached uh, rank 98 worldwide for like a whole five minutes because I just played this game nonstop. But SOCOM 1, not the best game but definitely a serviceable game, one that I have a lot of personal attachment to, but the cover ugh, leaves a lot to be desired. And this next game, I played it for the very first time uh, last year, going over to the PS3. This is Bulletstorm Limited Edition. I could say a lot of things about the cover. It's the bottom of a boot. It is the bottom of a boot and this is the limited edition usually limited editions are like the best cover right it's like oh these people are paying a little bit more or something foot you got the bottom of a freaking boot that is stupid and the thing is the gameplay is amazing right they've since uh remastered this game on switch ps4 all that good stuff but it's like a very outrageous game but the cover in no way reflects that as a matter of fact i had this game as part of my game collection for a long time but just based on the cover alone, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to check it out. And then it's not up until I saw some of the trailers for the remaster that I'm like, oh, this is a pretty cool game. So I'm actually going to get it. So if I thought about that, there's a good chance a lot of other people did as well. But if you've played that, let me know in the comments. And this next one, I do think it's going to become one of the more expensive PS3 games. It's already gone up in price and more so than a, than a game, I guess it's an overall compilation this is Tekken Hybrid. First of all, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of Tekken. I mean, Tekken, 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 Tekken everywhere, people. Tekken Hybrid contains the uh, Tekken Blood Vengeance 3D movie. So you can see they prioritized not the fact that you have freaking Tekken Tag Tournament HD, one of my favorite fighting games of all time. And here you have it in high definition. The focus is on the not so great 3D movie, but this is when they were really trying to sell us on the 3D TVs. I actually watched the movie because I have a Sony 3D TV and it's all right. Like the 3D is neat, but I haven't used my 3D in my TV for oof, like maybe like six, seven years or something. And then you have Tekken Tag Tournament uh, 2 Prologue, essentially a demo of that. So it's, it's like the oddest experience. And the thing is, I have so many people, and I guarantee you, even somebody watching right now, if I say, hey, did you know there's an HD version of Tekken Tag Tournament on PS3? Most people say no, because you look at Tekken Hybrid and Tekken Blood Vengeance, and then in this little corner, you have two logos that basically look exactly the same. And even when you go to the back, I mean, we could talk about the back of game boxes. A lot of them are just atrocious, because... Look at the actual image that you get of a game within the whole contents of the box, right? So I think it does a really bad job of selling maybe the best selling point of the entire package. And I mean, if it doesn't sell what really needs to be sold at the end of the day, I do think that's a, that's a pretty bad box. For this next one, it's a reliving some N64 nostalgia where we're talking about its sequel on the GameCube. This is Wave Race Blue Storm. Good box on the N64. This. Good box on the N64. This. How do you go from like a very colorful, vivid, I'm hoping I'm putting it in the right place. There we go. Is that good? Is that good? You know, it's like super colorful. You get to see the jet, yeah, the uh, jet skis and all that. And here you have this uh, 
little gremlin looking creature that I didn't even notice for years. I just thought this was like a generic jet ski logo that I'm like, oh, wait a minute. There's like a like a little demon thing there. And then just water. Look, is this game as good as the one on the N64? Maybe it's nostalgia talking. I don't think so. I have played this one uh, last year. I picked it up again, you know, played it for a little while. It's very fun. But when you look at even even some of the boxes that I don't like, even a foot, even a foot, okay, you look at this from afar, this one just has water, okay? At least the foot has stuff at the bottom. This is just freaking water. Like, come on, this this may be the worst of the bunch. I, I hadn't really thought about like ranking them. Uh, this is not in any particular order, but I guess if I had to, yeah, this may be the uh, one of the worst ones. The back of the box though, is the opposite though. You do get to see a lot of detail, so that's nice, but oof, not, not too great. Where do we go here? Let, let's have some fun here. This is maybe the, the, the game that's in almost every video that talks about this specific topic, and it's a great game, and ironically enough, the spiritual sequel, which is Sa uh, Shadow of the Colossus, has one of my favorite covers of all time. We gotta talk about Ico. When the PS2 first came out, I went to an electronic boutique and I saw the lineup and they had it in like this uh, very small, tall shelf. When I was looking at this, I'm like, what, what is this? Because it doesn't really say anything like it's an intriguing box, but you know, it's not a great one when they actually used the non North American cover for the HD collection on the PS3. I mean, this one, even though it, it's arguably even more simplistic, you get a sense of scope, right? The game's about escaping, so you actually get to see them at their very bottom. So at least that, it's like, oh, that's where I want to get to. The cover's actually selling me on the main concept of the game. Here, it's just like, wait, am I playing like baseball? Like, wh what is this? It's just like, like a suspense horror game. It doesn't really say anything. So... You do have the elements of the game, the main characters, the place, but some of it just does not seem connected. Not the worst box, right? Um, but it's it's just not great. I'm just gonna say that much. And let's do something a little bit different. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on the PlayStation 2. And for context, I have one of my favorite versions of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is 2X. A lot of people do not know this version uh, exists on the Xbox, so it looks a lot better. It's uh, it's freaking Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, one of the best games of all time. You know, I recently played the uh, the PS1 version. Still awesome, even though it's a little bit ugly. The draw distance is bad, but that's that's not what we're here to talk about. Look, you look at this one. Tony's got a pretty badass look. I mean, he's about to die if he doesn't fall the right way. And then this one's kind of like. Hey, Tony, look like you're kind of crapping yourself. I'm going to give a better close up there. You look like you're having some bowel problems. And then that's pretty much the box. And the problem is as simplistic, as similar as they are. I mean, he's pretty much dressed the same. So it almost looks like it's the same photo shoot. Is it the same photo shoot? I think it actually could be the same photo shoot. I'm looking at the shoes right now. I had not thought of that. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be camera angles. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research because I just thought about that right now. The pose has got to be better. This is badass. This is generic and kind of seems these. I think that's the challenge with uh, some of these games that instead of using the uh, game uh, graphics, they try to have the real person. It's like, you got to make this look badass. You got to make this look awesome. I mean, SOCOM 2 is a good example of we're still taking the concepts of the first box art, but we're actually doing like a, a good job at it. I got two more left here. No, actually I got three. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. I knew I was missing one. We got we got three more. Going back to the uh, PlayStation 2. So actually, I'm going to go with the PS1 first. This is not a bad cover. I freaking love this game. Legend of Lagaya, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I love the... Uh, the fight mechanics, the music, it, it's its not perfect, right? It's not a perfect game, but it's very good. So look at the uh, look at the box art, appreciate it. Even the back of the box is pretty damn cool. But then you go here. It just looks bad because this one's like stylistic. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It lets you know about the main characters. 
arguably, I mean, they tried to use the in-game graphics, which is commendable, but it comes across looking bad. Plus, this is when IDOS had like the fresh games thing. There were like a couple of games like Mosquito Man or something like that was also like that. There's like three or four games that had like this awful cover. I remember when I pre-ordered this game and I went to pick it up, my first thought was like, whoa, they made a statement with this box because it's not great as hits, but I think it came across as looking cheap when you get this game and it already has this like different label. And the fact that they didn't continue working with these let you know like, yeah, this is maybe not something that we loved. And really it looks so generic. It doesn't really say anything like this one. You can check out, you know, some of the elements behind it. I feel like it does tell a story as you continue looking in the back. But here it's like somebody went to Photoshop, applied some uh, motion blur filters, slapped in a couple of PNGs or something in the background and called it a day. And that's very sad. I don't think this game is better than the first, but it's a pretty damn good experience. Now, you know, I do love me some professional wrestling. And as a matter of fact, I have some pretty awesome news. If everything goes according to plan, I will be providing commentary for this event right here. I'm unsure if it's going to be in English or Spanish, but in my bucket list, I have always wanted to call a pay-per-view event for a professional wrestling show. So just wanted to share that here because it is just mind-blowing that I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be flying out to Atlanta, Georgia to call this event. It's uh, something that I'm very emotional about. So I'm really looking forward to if everything goes according to plan, card subject to change, right? COVID pandemic, like we got to be very mindful about just all the changes that happen. But if everything works, I will definitely come back here and share my experience while maybe talking about my wrestling game collection or something. But talking about one of my favorite wrestling games of all time, this is maybe top three. OK, maybe top three, but maybe top three also for the worst uh, wrestling box arts. It's Day of Reckoning. When I heard about the name, I'm like, OK, on the PS2, PS1, it's always been like Smackdown. It's been pretty obvious. Day of Reckoning, that sounds pretty cool, actually. And it did spawn a sequel. But then I saw the box art and I'm like, is this some kind of like soap opera? Like, what are we talking about? It's like, is Trish in a love triangle with Triple H and Randy Orton? Like, the box art does have some ties to maybe the story mode and things like that. But you look at this and it's like, is this like Days of Our Lives or something? It really just, it's lame. Visually, the aesthetic is nice, I guess. I mean, it kind of looks like a Randy Orton's head is being cropped off here, the, the hair. I feel like if they had faded that out a little bit, like that gold, um, whatever the hell it is, it would have been good. But then you even see here, there's like very little fading and Trish's eyes almost covered by the championship. And I feel like for a wrestling game, let's not forget that we come from WrestleMania 18 and 19 in the GameCube, which had real life uh, wrestlers, but it was more of like a traditional style here. They made a statement. And I do feel a lot of people did not play this game just because of the cover and the some like not so great reputation of 18, even though I love WrestleMania 19, the game and the actual show. But this is an amazing game. So if you have not played it and you love Here Comes the Pain and all that stuff, definitely uh, give it a shot. And last and certainly not least, this is not the worst cover I've ever seen, but much like uh, Tekken and uh, Bust a Move and all that stuff, I had seen this cover a lot. And every time that I saw it, I'm like, doesn't really say anything. I'm just a kid at that point, maybe like around 10, 12 years old. I forget how old I was at that point. And then one day I go over to a friend's house and I see the gameplay. And I'm like, I want to play that game. And when he pulled out this box, I'm like, oh, so you mean the game I could have bought this whole time? It's actually like pretty freaking good. This is a Star Ocean, the second story. You know, the first game never came out to North America up until recently via some uh, translated stuff. It's out on Switch. It's out on the PSP and all that. But the cover, it's beautiful, right? It's a beautiful cover. But if you were to judge the game just based on this, what would it be? It's like a puzzle game or something like that. I mean, Star Ocean, this is the first one that came out to North America. So if we had had the sequel or the first game, I should say, come out before this, maybe the context would have been a little bit different. And then you look at the back of the box and there's a whole lot of information on this side, but then you maybe have two screenshots that do a pretty decent job at selling you at the game. I feel like that middle one 
they tried to show off the pre-render backgrounds, but it's very dark, right? This is in a time where taking screenshots of games was not exactly uh, easy to do. And this one, the fact that I almost skipped it out and kind of like Super Busta Move, this game was actually on clearance the first time that I bought it at like 20 bucks. And I think it was like 30, 35 initially. And it's because people were not buying it. So over time, you know, we have seen other box arts like uh, once Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out, everybody was doing the person in the middle, you know, kind of shadowy walking forward with a weapon. But those were just more boring uninspired box arts, I really do feel like these just did not do a great job at selling you at some good to awesome games. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I had a really good time, you know, talking about all this stuff. It was difficult picking out because as I mentioned, a boring box art is not necessarily a bad one. If it at least it gives you a pretty decent impression about that game, right? But something like Tony Hawk, they just kept pulling them out and pulling them out. Eventually they did change the style dramatically with something like uh, Tony Hawk's Underground. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, people, you go down to that comment section because I really would love to just uh, get that list and maybe get like 20 box arts or something. I'll try to pick out the ones that come across the most in that comment section. And I can do a follow up because there's some really bad stuff if you notice. I try to limit my time to games that I do physically have copies of. If we just talked about, you know, screenshots that we're looking up online, I mean, we'd be talking about this for hours and that is what I do in that follow-up video. So if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe. Uh, give me that thumbs up and subscribe over to my Let's Play channel, youtube.com slash player one place. Got some really good stuff, including one of my favorite Xbox 360 games. I play a little bit, there we go, over there, of uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. So up until next time, thank you for watching, supporting, and take care, everybody.